Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'd like to showcase some stamps that I recently illustrated uh, and I think you may like them. It's a set of four flowers and they come with their own setting. So for example, if we look here, you'll see um, Clarity Stamps is the name of the company, as you know. Um, here I drew some really nice roses and they come with a brick wall. Then when we look here, look here, look here, you can see here we've got the daisies and they come with grasses. Now we've got some Lizzie, which are my personal favourites, and they come with the stones, with the, with the stone wall. And then here we've got a log pile and they come with beautiful reeds and grasses. What's interesting about these four sets of stamps is that they're all interchangeable. In other words, I could take the Lizzie and set them in underneath, the, uh, on top of the grass, or I could take the, um, the roses and set them in on top of the stone wall. So they're very mix and matchable, that's the point. And the way to do that is actually, each of these sets has also got a mask, a pair of masks with them. But more will be revealed, I'll show you how they work too. So let's get started. I want to show you a very simple, a simple card. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, I just want to show you how we can also bend the stamp. So if I look at, if you look at the stamp, it's obviously straight, isn't it, the grass? The grass is, the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. Let me show you a trick with the grass. We can also bend it on the mount. So I want to show you how that works, how we don't use the line underneath if we don't need it, and how we're going to get that beautiful yellow blend, and a couple of tricks with colouring as well. So let's get started. Really easy, actually, but it's a process like everything, isn't it? So what we're going to do, for example, if I take a piece of our Clarity stencil card, here we go, so we'll take a piece of Clarity stencil card, and then what I'll do is I'll cut it up. You see that comes out of here, so all I've done is cut it down the middle, that's just so you know where I'm coming from. So let's take a piece of card, right, and then what I'll do next is to... Um, to show you how to bend, we're going to, obviously we're going to make the artwork now. I stand up to stamp, it's just a, an old habit of mine, habits, habits die hard. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of copy paper underneath and the first thing we're going to do is establish the grass line. So if we look at the stamp, I've mounted it, it's easy to mount, look, just mount it on there like so. I'm going to take a black archival ink pad and I want to pop the, the grass about there and I'm going to keep it straight for now, for the top line. But what I want to do is, as I'm inking it up, let me show you, I'm going to avoid this line with this ink pad. So it's really easy. I'm just going to go in like so and make a mental note of not inking up that straight edge along the base. Now the line is good in another project, you'll be glad you've got that line. But at this point, I don't want ink on here. So I'm just going to check, right, no ink. And I'm using a black archival ink pad and that sets the base. So that's the line that I'm going to plant the flowers on. Can we see that okay? Right, easy. So now I've got my grass in place and you can see why I put the copy paper underneath, can't you? Right, so now what I want to do is um, maybe bend it a little bit. So let's take the stamp off the handle and if I hold it like so, I can actually manipulate the stamp a little bit to bend it on the plastic, you see, on the acrylic. And now that's going to become another, another grassy mound, if you like, if I'm making a pasture. And again, I don't want the, um, that solid black line, do I? So I'm just going to avoid it, quite straightforward. You can see exactly when you're inking it up what you're doing. And then I can add another line, let's say, there. So now we're adding a little bit more interest to it, you see? And if I want to, I can even add a little bit more. So actually, again, you've got to kind of keep, your, um, keep it in your mind that you don't want that, that straight line. I mean, if you want to, you can cut it off, but I, I do use it for other projects when I'm using the mask, so it's handy. Yeah, and then we could just bring this one down in the bottom. There you go. So we've got our grasses in place now. That's setting the scene already. So the next thing we want to do, let's go back here. The next thing we want to do, for example, is I would say that we'll probably be best off now adding the, let's do the background before we get to the stamps. 
Right, so how do we get the moon? Right, we've got moon masks, you know that at Clarity. So what I'll do is I'll just pop that moon or that sun or whatever it happens to be, an orb, right in there. And now we're going to get some colour into the background. I'm going to use my, my brayer, my speedball brayer, the best in the business they are. And then what I'll do is I'll start with a yellow, lovely yellow. Now when I, when I ink up my, my, um, my brayer, what I'm going to do is stay in the middle. See, it's an old trick. Let me show you this. Because I don't want a stripe, do I? If I just, if I, if I get ink on this edge of the brayer, then I'm going to get a stripe, which is what I don't want. So I can ink up the, the brayer like so. And then what's a good idea is to use a blending mat just to spread the ink out a little bit. So let's just do this. Right, I'm going to use this yellow in a minute for another thing. But what I'm doing all the time is avoiding, see how it's spread out on the brayer? It's old trick. Quite used to dine out on a brayer. About 15 years I must have used the brayer in my artwork. Right, still do. So what we're going to do now is bring in the yellow. And I want to start lightly and then I just start rolling, 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 rolling. Ha ha. Right, and as you go down, look, you see you don't get a stripe. And that's the key. So we bring in our brayer and we can use this ink again and again. Right, so I'll go in again and I'll make sure I just pick up the ink off here. If I want more, I can go direct, you know that. But to get that beautiful sort of graduated effect without a stripe, so yellow's a safe colour anyway, isn't it? But you could do this with a really beautiful sort of pinks and sunsets. See, and you just make sure you haven't got any ink on this one. Do you know, this is like a really old, comfortable pair of shoes for me. And we go again. And we keep going, and as I look how I'm travelling down, I keep going, I'm going beyond, I'm going right down into this area here, right? So, now the next thing, I think one more, maybe we'll fast forward this, hey? Because you get the picture now. Cool, so you can see how you can get a really nice graduated. The more you do this, the darker it will get at the top. You keep coming in from the top and br bringing it down. Now, it doesn't matter that I've gone over this area. It doesn't matter at all. What does matter is that now I'm going to cover up. This is where those masks come in. Let me just find the masks so you get the picture. So I better get the right one. Right, here we go. I need this one here. The first thing I want to do, for example, is do the green. So I didn't have to cover up the grass because the yellow isn't, isn't, isn't going to make a blind bit of difference. But what I do need to do is make sure when I'm doing this that I cover up the, um, the, the sky. That's what I do need to cover up, isn't it? So what I need now to cover up the sky is this part. Yeah? So what I'm going to do now is take my mask off here and what I need, you see, is to cover up that part of the sky. Do you see? Because when I come in with the green, the last thing I want to do, let me just get a pair of scissors. The last thing I want to do is go with the green into the sky. So let me just cut this off here and here because I don't need this bit, you see. Right, like so. Um, do you know what? I'm thinking on my feet here, but I think this is definitely a necessity. Let's have a look. So if I now, my masks, if I'm just going to pop this in place, like so, that'll do. Right, now I'm covering up the yellow and I can come in with the green. Basic, isn't it? So let's do this now. Hold that thought. What I do want to do, though, is cover up the sky because I don't want to bodge that. So we'll cover that up now. I've done enough yellow. What I can do now, I've got choices. Let me show you something. If I take my green, now I'm going into a darker colour, aren't I? I'll take my green. No need at all to, uh, oh, oh, right. No need, to, hang on to your ink pad, right? Now, no need at all to clean your brayer because yellow, it's just going to make a nicer yellow, you watch, nicer green, a spring green. So what we'll do now is we'll come over here and I'm going to actually take that, that, that colour now and roll that green, that dark green garland. These are artist ink pads, they're really cool. I'm taking that dark green garland colour and I'm rolling it over the yellow that was on there before. So that'll give us a really nice spring green. 
Now I want to check, see I've got a bit of green on there, on, a, on the edge. So what you do is in the old days before, we used to call this a wheelie, just get up on the edge there and get rid of that color. Now watch this, I'm gonna cover that up and the same again, and I'm just gonna come in with my green, see? And you just cover up that color, get a bit more, make sure you haven't got any, and so you go like that. And you just keep going until you're happy with the depth. Now there are other ways to do this as well. Let me just show you. We've got our under color down if you like, right? So this is a great way to get your base color. And you understand, look where my thumb is. You see where I'm pressing? That's important too. Right, now we'll turn this over. And what we'll do now is we'll just use the color on here, this yellow and green that we've moshed on there. And we'll just bring this in now. With a makeup sponge, you can see, you can really get into the detail now and you can create a bit more depth. And we're cleaning the blending mat at the same time. Right, so we just pick up that color and come in here. Now, if I wanted to as well, look, I can get much darker. I can go directly into the ink pad and I can add some yellowness, exactly. Now watch how it changes when you, you blend that color, that green and yellow together. It's really nice. Right, so we've done that, that'll do. We'll take that away now. And hopefully, when I peel this away, there we go. So now we've got our grass. So going back to our original picture, we're getting there, aren't we? You can see where we're going. This goes back on its carrier. So we'll just stick that on there for the moment. And now you understand why the mask comes with the, with the stamp. Now we'll take this one now, because of course we want to plant our flowers. So we're just gonna pop. What I love about these masks is the detail that you can get. Look, check that out. Now what I do want to do though, just take a makeup sponge and clean that mask off. When you do this as well, what you'll find is you get a nice, you get a really nice sharp edge. There you go. Subtle, that's called. <laughs> okay, you with me? Now we need the stamps. So I've used the Lizzie. I love this one. I was particularly pleased with this one. And when you look at the stamp, what you'll see is there's a real straight line along here. So it's really cool for uh, topping and tailing. I'll show you that if I get time, I'll show you that at the end. But at the moment, I just wanna pop these in place. I can always do another, another YouTube. Now let me just ink up this stamp well with a permanent black ink pad. This is an Arranger Archival Black. And the reason we're using this is because I'm gonna use water to color these pictures in. Now, I just wanna make sure that the, the straight line underneath the stamp sits on the mask. Then I'm gonna press hard in here, let the ink soak in. I hope this ink pad wasn't too old. I do like old ink pads, but there comes a point where they, they do have to actually go to Rainbow Bridge, don't they? Right, let's have a look. Boom, lovely. And it took the mask off at the same time. So that worked perfectly. And now we've got our image. And the whole idea is that the, the, the flowers now are planted behind the grass. That's the bottom line. So the only thing I wanna show you now is how to, let's have a look how to color these in. We're getting there, aren't we? So, downtime. If we take a look at this, let's look at the finished one. And you'll see here, so there are lots of different options. One of the best ones, in my opinion, is using the same colors to color in as we've used here. So let's start with yellow, for example. If I pop a little bit of yellow on the blending mat, let's do this here, right? If I do that, then I've got choices. I can, um, I've got these really, we've got these, I, we, the raw we, I've got these really cool blending pens, right? And they come with nibs. You want to check these out because they're superb to use. And what you can do is you can use them um, to, to pick up ink and then you can colour with them. So let's say, for example, I just want to spritz a little bit of water in here because I find if you add a tiny bit of water to the nib before you start, it helps the ink flow really, really well. So if I've got, a, let's put that nib in there and I'll just soak up a little bit of water. Let me, put, let me get a fresh one. Just pull these out of here, see if I can find a clean one. 
These are so good and they pop in there like that, see? Like that. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. Can you see that all right? So you pick up a little bit of water and then you can go in here and you load the color. Now I'm going with pure yellow, but of course it's obvious that you can, you can add as many, you know, you can, add as, you can create as many blends as you like. I'm gonna start somewhere where I can check that the, the ink is actually loaded well. Yeah, there you go. So it starts to glide. See? So I can already now, and you'll, you'll see when you do this, you don't have to press hard, but you see how beautifully these nibs help the colour glide. And that's, that's such a, a neat way to do. So I didn't have to re-ink at all there, did I? So now I've done the, the quieter one around the corner. Right, now I'm going to go to the centre. I want to make sure that it's working first, don't I? So let's just go back in here again. Yeah, see how it glides beautifully? So then I'll just go through here like that, see? Look, it's lovely, isn't it? And that's how now, even though the moon or the sun or whatever that orb was, was in the halfway through the flower, now by colouring in these flowers, you see, we're bringing the artwork into the front, aren't we? Um, you'll see, look, you can make it as light as pastel. It just depends how much, how much you dilute the ink. See how you can get it? If I go in the darker area, I'm getting brave now, um, you'll see I can, I can add depth of color, I can add shade, look. And you know now why I use the black ink pad, because it obviously, a black permanent ink pad, one, it creates the line art, and two, it creates depth. So that is how we add colour. Now, if I wanted to also, that's one way of adding colour. The other thing that we can do, we've got these really good felt tip pens. These are Perga, Perga colours, we call them. They're double-ended and they've got a bullet end. They've got a bullet end and they've also got an ultra, a really sharp end like this. And what you'll find is that these get in, these can get into really tight areas like so. Right, so this is pretty cool. This is just another option. You know, you can use pencils, you can use watercolour. I mean, how you colour these in is entirely up to you. This is quite a, a quick way to do it. Um, if you haven't got these, then you can use the ink pads with these nibs. It's, you know, choices, choices, choices. Um, let me just do a couple of minutes of fast forwarding here. How, how effective these pens are, how you can use the ink pads, any dye-based ink pads actually, or whatever you fancy really, with these, these great nibs. Um, so you should check them out on the website, they're well worth having. Um, do you remember Ranger used to do the cut and dry nibs and we all really used to use them all the time and then they discontinued them. And anyway, this is our response. We decided to, uh, to come up with a good solution. And, uh, and I like the fact that you've got them in a pen as well. So we just put all those back in there for another day. And, uh, and then the only thing left to do now, of course, I've still got ink over there, so we'll use that for Ron. And now, uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, Ray of Sunshine, this is nice. So we've got choices. I could either stamp that straight on there or I can make it pop a bit, couldn't I? So to make it pop, I just need a scrap of, this is ever so easy really, if you could find a bit of, I just need a little bit of card. There you go, like that. Here's one I did earlier. And then I'll just take, we've got these really cool, you should have, look them up as well on the website. They're word chains and there are loads of words that, and they're all linked together and then you cut them up and you make your own, you just make your own sentiment, whatever you fancy. So for example, if I want to do ray of sunshine, I'll pop that on there like so. This is so cool. There we are. So I've got Ray of Sunshine, they're really funky. I designed them myself. And then what I'll do is I'll just take this and I'll just cut it so that it's uh, probably better off doing it this way around. What do you think? Yeah, that'll do. All right, hold that in tight. That'll do. Right, so nothing like a bit of um, improvisation, eh? And then I'm just gonna make an arrow because I think it looks quite cool as an arrow. So we'll go like that. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I think that's pretty cool. Trim it up a bit more. That'll do. 
Right, so we've got our arrow, and then I need my, let me just find, where's my black Sharpie pen? Scours, right. Black Sharpie pen, and then all I'm gonna do is just make it pop by dragging. I don't need a ruler to do this. It works better without a ruler, to be frank. Who's Frank? Right, there you go. You do that, do that, do that. That's that. Right, and then that goes on there. And then if we wanted to trim this, because it's a little bit bit too much sky, really, isn't it? Looks a little bit, I don't know, whatever you fancy, really. I think I'll get a little bit of the sky off there. Hold on. Cut that back. That'll do. That'll do. And then we've got these blank card blanks. There's a black one. That'll make it jump really lovely, won't it? So you stick that on there like so. Stick that on there like so. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Fan is your aunt. All done. I hope you enjoyed that one. Very, very simple. Using our lovely new clarity stamps. I hope you enjoyed those too. Don't forget they're mix and match. Um, if, you, if you like what I do, then please leave a comment and um, subscribe to, the, uh, to our YouTube channel. I blog every day, barbaragrayblog.com. I think that's right. And, uh, and if you're interested in any of the products that I've used here, then of course, then um, pop over to our website, uh, claritystamp.com. We've also got two very, very strong groups on Facebook. Uh, Clarity, Clarity Worldwide and Groovy Worldwide. If you're into, you know what? That's something I forgot to say. These lovely images are also available in our Groovy plates for our, um, for our parching friends. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye now.